Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we're in the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. We resume our study in verse 10 today. Luke 2.10, get your Bible if you can, so that you can read the Word of God with me. While you're getting your Bible, I'll tell you about the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is where you can study the Bible, all of the Bible, all 31,000 plus verses four times at thebibleversebyverse.com. And you choose the series and the book of the Bible you want to study and the chapter, the section, click and listen. That's all you need to do and all you need to bring is your Bible to thebibleversebyverse.com. All right, well, let's pray. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth, your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's begin reading in uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were very much afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The shepherds were afraid in the presence of this angel. Everyone's afraid in the presence of an angel. When an angel appears, everybody gets scared. And the shepherds were afraid because they were sinners. And they knew it. And believe me, if they ever forgot that they were sinners, there were plenty of people who would remind them. And they were afraid, but they didn't have to be, not this time, because the angel was not there to judge or condemn. He was there to tell them that the Savior was born. 12. The angel says, This shall be a sign unto you. You shall, you shall find the babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Now the first part was not unusual. You will find the babe in swaddling clothes, but the second part was. Babies were wrapped tight with cloths, but most likely none were ever put in an animal feeding trough, except for the Son of God. Consider this. You say, why? Of all places, why would God the Father have his son be born in a barn and placed in an animal feeding trough? Well, consider this. If the Son of God would have been born in a palace or even in a motel someplace or in someone's house, the shepherds would not have been allowed to see him. They never would have gotten past the front door. Mary and Joseph and Jesus were in a stable. They were not in a stable because God the Father couldn't figure out how to get them into a nice home. He could have. They were in a stable because that's exactly where Almighty God wanted them to be. Sometimes God asks us to be inconvenienced and uncomfortable for the sake of others. How are you going to communicate Jesus to people in this miserable world who are in miserable circumstances if you aren't in some way or have not been involved some way in those kind of bad circumstances? You're not going to be able to identify with them. 
An ivory tower Christian who doesn't know what life is like in the real world won't get much of a hearing from a miserable sinner who has experienced the pains and the pressures of this life. So sometimes God asks us to be inconvenienced and uncomfortable for the sake of others. He even asks that of his son and Mary and Joseph. Inconvenience, to say the least, so that the shepherds could come and visit. 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Peace on earth is what Jesus brought. Someone says, Oh, yes, everyone should get along. That'd be nice if it was possible, but that's not why Jesus came. He didn't, he didn't come so that everybody could get along. He didn't come to preach peace at any price. He didn't come to say, let's placate evil people so that we can get along with them. He didn't, he didn't come to say, let's placate Hitlers so that they won't beat us up and kill us. That's not why he came. He didn't come to bring peace between good and evil or between truth and error or between sinners and saints. He came to bring peace between sinners and God by dying for our, for our sins on the cross. That's why he came. 15, and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherd said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. So the angels deliver their message to the shepherds, and then they leave. If you read the Bible from cover to cover, you will see um, several angelic visits, but they're never seen hanging around after they do their business. They, angels do not get into small talk. They're working for God so they don't waste time and they take their role seriously. So they deliver their message and they're back in heaven or wherever God sent them. And notice verse 16, and they came with haste. The shepherds did and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. No doubt the shepherds told Mary and Joseph all about their angelic visit. And what a great encouragement that must have been to both Mary and Joseph. What a great encouragement to Joseph and Mary who find themselves in a stable with the Son of God. Unpleasant surroundings and unpleasant circumstances are much easier to handle when you are reminded of God's presence and his approval. 17. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Like the shepherds, God has called Christians to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. I once, many, many years ago, as a fairly new Christian, in fact, I've only been saved probably for a year, I was going, I went to a Baptist church and uh, I heard a preacher say, it was supposed to be some kind of an, a personal evangelism type study. And I heard the teacher, the preacher say, uh, he's supposed to be an expert evangelist. He said, every Christian should take a class on personal evangelism and how to witness for Jesus. And he also said you ought to go to the tech, the local technical institute, and take a class on salesmanship so you can be a witness for Jesus. What an idiot. I was a year old in the Lord, and I knew that was stupid. You can't sell Jesus to someone. You give them the gospel. And if they're interested, the Holy Spirit will burn it in their hearts, and they'll get saved. 
And even this idea of taking a, a class on personal evangelism and how to witness to Jesus, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, okay? But it can be a bad thing if it becomes a busy work substitute for simply telling people about Jesus. I don't know why you have to have a class in personal evangelism. I, I don't know why you have to have a class. I don't know why you have to go through a workbook. Are you saved? Has Jesus saved your soul from hell? Have you repented and received him as Lord and Savior because you know he, he died on the cross to pay for our sins? Yes. Okay, then tell somebody that. You don't have to go to school for that. You don't have to, take a, you don't have to fill out a workbook for six weeks on Sunday school to figure out how to do that. Tell people what you did and what Jesus did. It take you two minutes. Do it. It's that simple. But no, a lot of times Christians... Modern evangelicals, they, they got to they gotta do busy work because, because they don't really want to witness to unsaved people, so they'll do stuff like taking personal evangelism classes so it feels like they're doing something. I'm learning how to do it, and someday I will when I'm ready. Baloney, you'll never be ready with that attitude. Well, witnessing for Christ is very simple. The shepherds show us the way. You do what the shepherds did right here. They spread the word about what they had been told. So witnessing for Jesus means telling people about your experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's that simple. If you have faith in Jesus and you know that he has saved you, then just Tell people about Christ and tell them what you did and what he did. Doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. 18. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Well, just consider, hey, consider for a second what may have been going through the minds of the people who listened to the shepherd's story, and you may understand why they marveled. The people were expected a savior. They were expected to be born in Bethlehem, and they were expecting him to be born about this time, according to the book of Daniel. So they were expecting that, and they knew it was Bethlehem, but they never would have expected in a million years the Savior to be born in a barn. They never would have expected him to have humble parents like Mary and Joseph. They never would have expected his birth to be announced to lowly shepherds. Of course, on the other hand, the people who heard might have thought, well, shepherds were not the type of people to care about religious things, so they wouldn't make up a story like this. All these people, all these things made the people scratch their heads in amazement. None of it made sense, see? 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. I suppose mothers usually don't forget the things that happened concerning their children. Mary, the mother of Jesus, had more things to consider than most mothers, that's for sure. Verse 20. And the shepherds returned glorifying God, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. So the people who the shepherds talked to did not get excited about Jesus like the shepherds themselves. The shepherds were excited. And one reason is that the shepherds had the angelic experience, that's true. But there's another reason, a reason which holds true today. The down and out and the despised are often more ready to receive the things of God than the more fortunate, so they were pumped up. And I'm gonna stop right there. If you wanna be a part of this ministry, pray for me and pray for God's word. And also go to the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com. Click the note aim button and prayerfully give us the Lord may lead. And I will see you next time on Scripture verse by verse.